Emmanuel, God with us. So often we come to church because we want to meet God. But we lost sight of the fact we don't even take our pleasure. You can be alone and you'll be found. You might just connect with somebody and with two or more gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. So he's not only within, he's without. But God with us, we come hoping to encounter him, hoping to run into him, only to find out he was there all the time. It doesn't get any better for the child of God than the confidence, the assurance, the knowledge this morning. He has made some awesome promises to his children. Uh, we sang Mary, did you know? Yeah. You know, you can sing it all year long, but at Christmas time, it just, it, it comes at you. It's like, you know, catching a big wave and you don't have a surfboard and it just washes over you. Uh, I think, uh, you know, 35 years we've had that, that song. I'm going to write Mark Allen. I'm going to ask him to write a song. People, did you know? Mary, Mary knew, but she knew on a very limited basis. If you read the scriptures, when he came, he had great news for her. Mary was special. You've been selected, you know. Years ago, we used to have uh, Miss Reinhold and all those contestants, all those lovely young ladies, and only one would get the title. But out of all the young ladies in all of Israel, <coughs> Miriam, Mary, one, one got chosen. Her lineage was correct. Joseph, come here, I got an assignment for you. I know I didn't do it. That's right. We didn't God did. the lineage of David. God, when God gives us all these clues and all these indicators, and, and we, you know, we want to be Sherlock Holmes and, and figure it out, and is this really so? And, you know, we become these great doubters. Well, can all of that really be correct? Yes. Yes, it can. And little by little by little, over year after year after year, it unfolds. And 4,000 years go by, and Mary, did you know? And 3,000 years later, we're, we're wondering, can I know? How long did it take you to realize that, yes, everything that this book talks about is real and is so, and we have reason to rejoice? Why else? Why else would the enemy taught us this one holiday, this one holy day that we remember? Why would he clutter it with all the junk? Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Boss see the snowman. If you look at the lawns of people, you know, two things impress me. Now, as we were coming here today, I drove by, I saw a lot, saw a lot of Santa's blowing over, heavy winds yesterday. Yeah, Santa's on his side. The sleigh is out of commission. Okay? I did not see one nativity scene not failed. I did not see one 
Unfortunately, there were fewer of those. There were more characters connected with Christmas than you could shake a stick at. But then comes what Christmas is about. I know we celebrate, you know, the birthday of Jesus. And yes, he had to be born so that we might be born again. But it's not the day of his birth. Actually, they didn't, they didn't uh, select December 25th, whoever they might be. You know the day that they say and they did? And they, you know, God knows who they are. One day we'll find out. But I think it, it wasn't until 364 AD that they finally honed in on a date. But, but I said earlier, two things. Two things speak to my heart this time of year. First and foremost, the nativity scene. Secondly, the lighting of a menorah. Jesus, the light of the world. I, I don't I, I don't think that that the Jewish people understand that they relate to a miracle God did when he touched the lamp lit in the in the temple, where the oil never ran out. There's a price of oil today, don't you wish it would never run out? But that oil, that oil touched the, touched the lamp lid. Those two indicators tell the world, and especially the believer, that God is still sovereign, he's still on the throne. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Um, First, first of all, and, and we'll repeat it again, um, I don't know if it was a good idea to move the service. We thought we were accommodating people, but not remembering that some people have to work on Saturday, Christmas Eve or not. I, 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 you know, I think we should have either made it around noon, because um, most folks would work a half a day, um, but we'll, we'll give it more thought in the future. We just thought that this, this was a better idea. Doesn't always work, does it? Um, we plan and God laughs. <laughs> Good evening, Lord from God and Father. Um, I just, I, I think as a believer, we just have such a different assessment of this time of year. Now, we, we sang, I guess, basically, the Lord come let us adore him. Every baby is adored and adorable and everybody fusses and all of that. And then we go up and play a lot like us. <laughs> you know, they remember the, the baby. And we do. We, we fuss over babies. It's, it's, it's a constant reminder of God's creative ability and, and our assignment. is a very comfortable thing because a baby isn't threatening. A baby, you know, just pick out love and, and, and warmth and, you know. Um, when you see 60 and 70 year and 80 year old people going, do you really? <laughs> you wonder they lost it. You know, but babies bring out that, I guess, that childlike uh, a part of us. But it's not a baby. It's not a baby we're celebrating. Pastor said it so well. The God of all creation came in, onto this earth. He didn't arrive in a, in a jet. He didn't just descend from a cloud. He, he got here the same way we got here. To prove, to demonstrate, to prove, to remove any doubt about God's love for his creation. And he's all inclusive. Jew, Gentile, Roman, Greek, you know, didn't matter. Everybody is eligible to revel and roll 
and, and rejoice in, in, in the, the love and the goodness of God. And yet, um, we kind of focus on the baby. Well, yeah, he started out as a baby. And last, yeah, last week, um, we looked at um, Elizabeth and Mary, uh, her cousin, and, and Zacharias, Zacharias, Elizabeth's husband, and their angelic visitation. And the promise of the birth of, uh, of, of, of John the Baptist, baptizer. I, I, I don't like to call him John the Baptist because he wasn't a Baptist. Um, but this morning I want to look at the events leading up to Jesus' birth. And we're going to go to a very familiar passage in Luke chapter 2. And I'm going to look at the first. 20 verses, and by then you should be lulled into a semi sleep. <laughs> but it's a great story, and it works, and it tells us. And then we're going to do a, a short word left, and let's see what, what God really wants to say to us this Christmas. Okay, because every Christmas is different, even though we rehearse the same thing. Every Christmas is different. And hopefully this one will really um, take us on a turn uh, for the better. So, um, Je Luke chapter 2, Jesus' is birth, and, and I, it's going to be half exciting because I only have one hand full. But anyway, now, in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Not that that matters to us. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Just as we, um, you know, every time you change a location, you have to re-register to vote. You have to change the address on your driver's license. Go to the bank, tell them you have a new mailing address. You know, um, we, somehow we have to have a, a point of origin and a, and, a, and a point of reference. All right. So everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Interesting how God had, um, had the prophets declare these things so many, many years before. And then, when the circumstances were not such, he arranges that they come in, 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 you know, into line. And, and that these things do happen. You don't find an oops in Scripture. There just aren't any. That God didn't slip. He didn't mess up. He didn't miss something. The prophet didn't get it wrong or else if he did, it wasn't included in here. So based on what we know, we're, we're going to um, see how much of this unfolds and how much really um, uh, was already told to us and told to the people of that day and whether or not they could put two and two together. Joseph also went up from Galilee from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Now, Beth Bethlehem, and, and I'm not a, a student of Hebrew, but I believe it's pronounced Bethlehem. And it means house of bread. Now, doesn't that tell us something? Jesus declared he was the bread of life. God, you know, fed um, the children of Israel in the desert with bread, manna, made sure they had a provision that whole time in the day. And when they reached their destination, the manna ceased. No longer was necessary. God's provision is as long as it's necessary. God's provision is as long as it's necessary. Different for all of us, but as long as it's necessary. All right because he was of the house and family of David. 
in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. They got to where they, they were supposed to be, and sure enough. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. Um, I don't know if you ever noticed. She didn't just give birth to a son. She gave birth to her firstborn son. The indication is that there were more. But the firstborn especially um, in, in Jewish culture and, and religion, um, really gets double on. But her firstborn, um, the only reference I, I, I could find, I was looking around trying to see if there was some significance, but I did find uh, Jesus in his ministry, when he came upon the widow of Nain, it says that she was a widow, had no husband to provide for her, and it was the death of her only son. Now, if Jesus were the only son, I think it would have said that. But for your consideration. And she wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, he just summarized it. He didn't talk about their trying to find a place or anything. He just, just wrapped it up. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And wouldn't we all be? You know, I, I, really, I don't want to meet an angel until I'm you know, there, you know, and, and, and then they can come and go all they want, but um, I, I, I think it would consume me, I, you know, I just know, I, I don't know, and, and thank you, Lord, for your grace in, in, in that regard, um, but the angel said to them, now every time an angel showed up, people were frightened. What's, what is he, what is the angel open with? Come on, don't be afraid. You know, I'm big. I'm, I, I can do a lot. But I'm not here to threaten or intimidate. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. Wow. This is already for everybody. Not just for a select few, not just for a chosen people. Jesus didn't limit his purpose. He came that all, all might be saved. For today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior, a Savior, a promise. What does Savior translate to, to a people that are enslaved? A king, a leader, a prince. Somebody is going to take charge and change things around here. Who is Christ the Lord? Now, please understand, we bandy the name about Jesus Christ. That was not his name. His name was called Jesus, or Yeshua, meaning salvation. Christ is a Greek uh, name uh, 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 refers to m Messiah. Um, uh, it, it's it, we know we have a first and a last name. They they had two names, but one um, indicated the name given them. The other either related to their family or to their occupation or to the town they came from. But he was never known as Jesus Christ. We, we put that together in, in, in English. Jesus the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, you know, that's, that's how, how, he was, how he was known. But who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel. First, this guy comes in and makes the announcement. A multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men um, of good will. And when the angels had gone away, I guess the choir was dismissed. But they, they showed up to herald, you know, the, the announcement. Hark the herald angels. That, that was just, you know, that was the choir. Um, they, they were the ones set aside for those special occasions. And when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened. It, you know, if you think about it, watching sheep out on the plain or in the, in the hills there, at night, it, no driving movies, um, no, no cell phones, Nothing to entertain or amuse them, but they had to be watchful for those animals that would prey on, on their sheep. So maybe they took turns sleeping and some staying awake. But there wasn't a whole heck of a lot going on. And um, a star twinkling, an angel speaking, a, a, a chorus of angels singing. Boy, that was something. And, and they knew it was special. And so they said, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph. Now, you think they just, you know, kicked in the GPS? They, 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 they were led. They, they were led. They, they just came into Bethlehem, I guess found a stable, and there was Joseph, Mary, and the baby in, in a feeding trough. And they say in a manger. Um, and we, we make it look nice and put straw in it, but there wasn't straw. That's where the animals ate. They ate out of that feeding trough. And so they probably cushioned it with straw and then laid the baby in it. And the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told to them about this child. What was told to them about this child? Verse 11. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as had been told them. Those shepherds, their life was changed in an instant, in an encounter, in an evening, on the outskirts of the city, you know, just watching over some sheep. It, it would never be the same for them. And, and, and I, I, I just want to look at verse 20 and say the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they heard, all that they saw, and all that they were told. Let me ask you to consider Is this Christmas any different from all the past ones? They, on all that you've heard, on all that you've seen, on all that you've been told, is there a sense of excitement and anticipation this Christmas? Not, oh, I'm going to shop and shop. Oh, we still have to prepare all of these years. Oh, how are we going to do that? How are we going to get to, you know, um, I think the first Christmas for a couple sets the tone for the rest of their life. We go to your mother's or we go to my mother's? You know, and the battles begin. Well, we go there for Thanksgiving, we'll go to your folks for Christmas. New Year's will stay home. 
You know, how is Christmas any different based on what you've heard, what you've seen, and what you've been told? I just thought that we needed to ponder that for a minute. How has Christmas changed? Remember growing up? I don't think I'm going to shatter anybody's uh, bubble if I tell you. Santa, he gets from Earth um, two of the letters, and he got Satan. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, challenging any children. I mean, it's nice, it's cute, it's cultural, but it's not the reason for the season, and it's not the reason that we should be the same as all the past Christmas. This Christmas should be very different to the child of God. Very different. Not because of gifts, not because of giving, not because of getting, but because of what we celebrate and what we remember and what we recognize and what what has been done for us? And, and my question is, why shepherds? Why shepherds? You ever think about it? Now, we know that there were magi. There were wise men. Men of uh, good report. Men who, who uh, I don't know if they studied the scriptures or if they studied the planets or whatever, wherever they got their knowledge somehow they knew and they came to honor the birth of Jesus. But we only read about them once. Shepherds appear in the Old and New Testament over 80 times. Why the reference to shepherds? They're lowly and yet in some capacity as, as shepherds Shepherding over the, 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 the sheep of God, the household of God. Oh, that's not lonely anymore. Oh, that's elevated. But shepherds, how often Jesus used shepherds in his, in his parables, in his, in his teaching, in his analogy. So I want to I wanna look a little bit at, at, at shepherds over 80 Old Testament and New Testament references. And what, which one comes to mind? When, when you think about an Old Testament shepherd. Hmm? Oh, David, yeah, he was a shepherd boy. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transition to Psalm 23 because I don't think we fully understand the position we have as a child of God, as a believer, as one who has come into a restored relationship with a heavenly father. David writes, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Somebody said to me, if you want to memorize um, uh, Psalm 23, just change it slightly. The Lord is my shepherd, that's all I want. That says, it, that says it all. But let's, let's look at the detail. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, we can find fault with that because some of us still want stuff. It doesn't mean want as we address want uh, today. What it, I believe the word properly translated is I shall have no lack. Should, I'm not missing anything. I may desire things I don't have, but that's not a want. The scriptures are saying, the Lord is my shepherd, and therefore, I don't lack a blessed thing. Everything that I need for my walk with him, and, and, and the, uh, every provision for, for my family or whatever I'm called to, is available to me. And I don't have to jump up and grab at it. I don't have to get the right number. I don't have to do cartwheels. 
when it occurs. But we have the comfort and the assurance of one day we will be together again. I fear no evil for you or with you. Some people are so wrapped in fear. And they say they're believers. But their confidence is in everything and everyone else but him. How on who do we serve? Well, did you ever ask him? Did you ever trust him? Did you ever step out? So many of us blame God when we are at fault. We refuse to do what he asks us to do. Uh, let me give it to you again, my definition of faith. You've heard it before, but maybe, maybe I can remind you. Faith is having your feet firmly planted in midair. It's totally trusting God. Not, not my resources, not my connections, not my genealogy, not my uh, career, not, not anything but him. Totally trusting him. Peter, a great example, runs out on the water, dark and drowns, but he ran out on the water because Jesus said he could. What did Jesus say you could do if you haven't done that? Where did he lead you? Where did he tell you he wants you? He wants you to do it. I fear no evil for you or with you. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Two very different tools. The staff, the shepherd's staff. Oh, the sheep is wandering. Pull him back a little bit. Um, the rod is for those animals of prey. He, he beat a lion. He beat a, a, a bear. Whatever tried to hurt those sheep, the rod or the sling would take care of them. David was a model shepherd. He protected the sheep. He watched out for them. What a picture of our Savior. What a picture of Jesus. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I, I can only think of the Last Supper and Jesus being betrayed. The table was prepared. His enemy was there. And he wasn't going to change his mind. You have anointed my head with oil. Why? Why does a shepherd an anoint the sheep, head, and ears with oil? Because the bugs get in there, and they drive you crazy, and, and they run them up. And, they, and those bugs can, can drive that, that sheep, uh, you know, uh, loony, and it runs off, and of course, it's, it's separated from the flock, and, and it's attacked, and it becomes bigger for some other animal. My cup overflows. If if we would carefully sit down and accept all that God has made available to us, even the things that are wrong, your cup is overflowing. You have more than enough to accomplish what you need to accomplish. Your cup just overflows. Surely. Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The promise to the child of God, the promise is that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Not we're going to come to church seven days a week, but that he will come for us and bring us to present us to his heavenly Father. Now, are, are, are these things backed up? Well, I think so. It was, um, I, didn't, I didn't write it down. But we're told in the scripture that he would never, 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 that's the Greek translation three times, he would never leave us nor forsake us. He doesn't take a holiday. He doesn't step back and say, hey, figure this one out yourself. He will never, Emmanuel, the God with us, will never 
leave us more secure. He promises that both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, he says to, to Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will be with you and I will lead you. That's a promise. He, he, he promises everything that we need shall be available to us, not early and not late, but everything we need. He also promises that the difficulties that we face, they're there. Not, not to see if we will believe, but, but to prove us, to strengthen us, to show us, to bring forth what's been deposited in us, but we never stand up and challenge the lies of the enemy. We just take it and take it and take it and say, well, uh, this is the hand that, that was dealt to me, and oh, poor me. And how sad when one day we will stand before the Lord and see all that he has in, in, set up in, in a way for us. And we miss it. Because I'll just give in. It's easier to fight. And I'm tired of fighting. I, every fight I lose, why bother? The devil is not stronger than any of us. He's not better than any of us. But he's more persistent than we are. Especially if he's winning especially if he's getting his way. But we are called, we are called sheep because we drift in, we drift out, we pay attention, we move to the front, we go to the back. We're all over the place. But God has promised some awesome things for his children. And Jesus is described. And, and the reason... I thought it appropriate to spend some time on shepherds and, and, and this psalm and the promises that are in here. Every area of life is covered in that Psalm 23 because the Lord is my shepherd. So Jesus is described in John 10 as the good shepherd. In Hebrews 13, as the great shepherd. And in 1 Peter 5, as the chief shepherd. Whichever one you like, good, great, or chief, or all three, he is ready, willing, and available. Yes, he came as the babe of Bethlehem. But he didn't stay there. And it's not for us to look on and say, well, isn't he cute? Our Savior's not cute. In fact, what it cost for him to save us is pretty ugly and upsetting and, and excruciating. But you see, our love, John Stair, rises and falls. His love never changes. He loves to the utmost. And for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. Mary firstborn, but God's only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. We've been given, given everlasting life. What are we doing with it? Are we just holding on? Are we just hoping the ship doesn't sink? Are we just hoping that, oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Don't come back, Lord, until we've done what we're supposed to. Don't come back until we've got this message out. Don't return. Please, don't return. That we would be found wanting, that we never did rise to the occasion, that we never did. You know, we wear a Christian T-shirt, but it's underneath our sweater so nobody has to see it. It's time to come out. The Secret Service, um, you see what's going on in our government? All those that are supposedly protecting us are colluding and working for their own benefit. The only one we have is him. 
The only way you can rely on, the only way you can put your head on the pillow at night and say, I know he loves me, I know he has my best interest at heart, is the Lord Jesus. And we celebrate his birth, not his birthday, we celebrate his birth that we too might be born again. We celebrate that because that's the reason we have any hope at all. And I encourage you, we're turning the corner, we're coming into a brand new year, and there's a whole lot that's rising up against the church, what the church stands for, what we believe. I'm not changing my pronouns, I'm not changing my belief, I'm not giving any, I'm not giving the enemy a, a, a quarter of an inch. I'm standing on the word of God. And I believe in him. And we may well be tested, saints. But we have every reason to walk in his ways, to hold on to those truths, to allow, to allow the good shepherd to lead us, to lead us in his in ways of righteousness. We don't have to beat a drum and we don't have to declare. The problem with most Christians is people know what we're against. Nobody knows what we're for. And that's and that's a sad commentary. We are, yes, we're pro-life. Well, we're pro a lot of other things. Okay? We're, we're pro Proverbs. Train up the child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. Oh, well, I like the, I like the school system I institute. Oh, well. Um, you know, what are you going to do? Society's changing. We don't have to change. We've already been changed. We are changing into the image and likeness of a holy God. And Christmas is the time to remember our humble beginnings and the work in progress, and it's time. No more excuses, saints. No more excuses. It's time to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. Oh, Father, you are so good. You are so good to your children. And I am so glad that we have a shepherd, that we have a God who has not only breathed life into us, but has given us new life and has sealed it. And we have invited and received an indwelling Holy Spirit. And when we sing Emmanuel, God is with us. We know for sure we do not face anything alone. We are never, never, never um, at our own wits and without the support, the encouragement, and, 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 and the backup, the blessings that we need. Father, I pray for everybody within the earshot. Lord, anybody who catches this, who stumbles upon it on Facebook or wherever it goes, Lord God, that they would know that they have access to the one true living God. And I pray that this message and the message of a good shepherd and a chief shepherd and a great shepherd would resonate throughout this coming year. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen. God bless you. We are going to study a little bit for fellowship and um, I hope you can. But have a, a blessed Christmas. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't forget. Oh, yeah.